Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got quite a few things to go over for the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. We have some new leaks to take a look at for the Teal Mask locations, legendary typings, a lot of that stuff to break down today. There's a lot of things to go over. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on the latest Teal Mask leak. Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, we're going to be going over all of the locations that have been leaked for the Teal Mask DLC. And this is actually quite promising because there's quite a few locations on this list here. Uh, this was actually like leaked like when the big, like when the whole Teal Mask thing got leaked. We're only just getting around to it because it kind of segues into something else that I want to talk about. But anyway, Centro Leaks here tweeting out saying new places in the Teal Mask DLC. So we have Kitakami Road, we have uh, Masui Town, Loyalty Plaza, Revelers Road. Kitakami Hall, Oni Mountain, Dreaded Den, Oni's Moor, Crystal Pool, Oni Mountain Summit. So we've got a load of Oni Mountain kind of situations here. Uh, Wistful Fields, we've got Mossfell Confluence, we've got Fellhorn Gorge, Paradise Barrens, Kitakami Wilds, Timeless Woods, which of course is where the uh, Ursulunas form is going to be, Infernal Pass, and then Chilling Waterhead. So this is quite a lot of locations for the Teal Mask. Now, all in all, the Teal Mask looked relatively small from like the gameplay that we got. This kind of gives you a better idea of how big it is going to be. But at the same time, even though there are a lot of locations here listed, I feel like a lot of them are going to be like small locations of a like of a bigger one. Like with the Oni Mountain, for example, like Oni's Moor, Oni Mountain Summit and Oni Mountain are probably all going to just be like one location. They're just going to be like different aspects of it. So it's still not making me think that the Teal Mask is going to be like a huge location. Uh, but at the end of the day, there are quite a lot of different sub-locations you can go into for uh, the Teal Mask, uh, Teal Mask DLC, which is always good. But again, I don't know if it's going to be bigger or smaller than the Isle of Armor. I think the Indigo Disc will definitely... I don't think the Indigo Disc is going to be massive. I just think we're going to go to different places. Like, we're going to have the Blueberry Academy, and then we're also going to go back to Area Zero. So that's kind of like two locations in one. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about this. It's not too long until this drops anyway. But um, yeah, those are all of the locations. But we also have this from Soul Silver Art talking about one of these locations, saying probably one of the last Teal Mass Dex images I'll post until the DLC releases, because I don't want to get in trouble. But this is a very beautiful and very interesting image. So Kitakami is not in nor near Paldea. We know that for a fact. We are a foreign exchange student going to Kitakami. That is literally in the text. Um... Kitakami is not known as uh, Paldea, therefore there it should be no terrestrial in this region. But there is a location called the Crystal Pool that I highly suspect to be the same place in this image. So this image here you can see Milotic uh, for the deck entry of Milotic, but we do have some sort of crystal-like pool here. And this definitely gives me Terrapagos vibes as well. It definitely gives me like the color scheme of Terrapagos. So that's obviously very interesting. This could be a way to link the two DLCs together. Could this pool somehow have a connection back to Area Zero? Maybe an underwater tunnel slash portal, or maybe they were brought here somehow. This may be called the Teal Mask, but it's all under the, the DLC title of the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero. Could this be where Ogopon found the Teal Mask, or maybe uh, it found Terra Gems and it added to its mask? Or maybe Terrestrial is possible in Kitakami due to this pool. The Kitakami locals could possibly mine the crystals here. The possibilities are vast and the implications are very interesting. Um, we, we do know that you can already terrestrialize in the Teal Mask DLC because we've seen it in a trailer. Um, even though terrestrialization is only in Paldea, that's why we feel like there has to be some sort of other kind of force allowing people to terrestrialize their Pokemon in the Teal Mask. And it very well could be this pool. Uh, this could be a very specific location. And yeah, it could have links to the uh, the Indigo Disc DLC as well. So that's the locations. Next up, I wanted to go over like the Dex entries and stuff for... Uh, these Pokemon. So uh, Diplin's Dex entry is that Diplin is two creatures in one Pokemon. Its evolution was triggered by a special apple grown only in one place. The head sticking out belongs to the forewarm, uh, while the tail belongs to the core worm. Uh, the two share one apple and help each other out. Again, I still feel like this Pokemon is going to evolve in the uh, Indigo Disc as well. I think it's definitely going to be a Galarian Slowpoke situation. One evolution in one DLC and another evolution in a different DLC. So uh, yeah, hopefully it does evolve. It doesn't look like a final stage either like it very much gives vibes of a middle stage you've got flapple and you've got um whatever the other one's called um appleton they look like final evolutions diplin does not i feel like diplin definitely is going to evolve again we also have poltergeist as well um it's also been confirmed that poltergeist is going to have a different kind of form just like we have the 
um, authentic form for Sinistee. So that's always going to be great, trying to shiny hunt that. We don't know what the odds of it going to be or anything like that, but it does have like different forms. So supposedly for Poltergeist, the regrets of a T-Ceremony Master who died before perfecting his craft lingered in some matter and became a Pokemon. And then uh, Poltergeist is the masterpiece form. It sprinkles some of its powdery body onto food and drains the life force from those who so much as lick it. And then we also have uh, Sinistra, which is the evolution of Poltergeist, which also has two different forms as well, being the unremarkable form and then the masterpiece form. So uh, again, just deck sentries there. We have Okidogi. After all its muscles were stimulated by the toxic chain around its neck, Okidogi transformed and gained a powerful physique. So I don't know if that's kind of a hint towards a future form of it or not, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Monkey Dory. The chain is made from toxins that enhance capabilities. It simulated Monkey Dory's brain and caused the Pokemon's psychic powers to bloom. So this chain of toxic is definitely like the culprit for these legendary Pokemon. And then Pheasantipity owes its beautiful looks and lovely voice to the toxic stimulants emanating from the chain wrapped around its body. And then we obviously have all the different Ogapon kind of like deck sentries as well. Uh, again, the Pokemon's type changes based on which mask it is wearing. It confounds uh, its enemies with nimble movements uh, and kicks. So it, it goes on to say that the, the, the mask does kind of uh, change the type of this Pokemon. Now, these aren't confirmed. This is why this is at the end of the video. So all of this stuff at the start is like leaked information. This isn't 100% confirmed. This is just very likely based on what we already know and about the leaks and of course, like what previous leakers have said. So this is Makio and Jay Rosa tweeting out saying, so apparently the Loyal 3 and Ogapon typings have been confirmed by Ridlaku. Ridlaku did kind of tweet this out which gave us more of an idea of what these typings are going to be when he said it's quite clear now and then obviously he just kind of had all the lanterns and stuff so uh, as we had already imagined so okie dogie is going to be poison fighting monkey dory is going to be poison psychic and then pheasantipity is going to be poison fairy again we've thought this for a very long time it's still not confirmed like none of the typings are confirmed yet at the point i'm re uh, recording this but um, these are the most likely typings for the Legendary 3. We then have Ogapon as well. So Ogapon without the mask should be a ghost type. And it has four masks. Its dex description says that Ogapon's type changes based on which mask it's, uh, it is wearing. So we know that it potentially could be a ghost type. That's what it looks like. But then with the mask that it has, that also changes Ogapon's typing as well. So... Because there are four different masks that this Pokemon can have, that means that it's going to have four different typings. So just basically judging what the Pokemon looks like, we're assuming that the Ogapon that we know, like with the green mask, is going to be Grass Ghost. Uh, we then know that we're getting another form of Ogapon, which is going to be like this water form, um, which most likely is going to be Water Ghost. And then we also have a Fire form of Ogapon, which is going to be Fire Ghost. And then we also have a rock type Ogapon, which is going to be rock ghost. Again, that's not confirmed. That's just the very likely outcome. Does this mean that the type is replaced or is it added? From ghost, it became ghost fire or just fire. This is the only uh, doubt we have. What do you think? So that's another way of looking at, it, uh, looking at it. They could be dual typings or it could get replaced. Because all it says is the type changes depending on the mask. So it could be a ghost type and then change to a grass type, change to a water type, change to a fire type or change to a rock type. So that's the only thing we're unsure about, but we are expecting ghost to pop up, grass to pop up, water, fire, rock, all to kind of pop up with these different Ogapon typings. We also have Centro Elites here saying, you know, those are the typings that we're uh, expecting to have. Uh, the types for Ogapon were speculation based, uh, based on the old leakers' hints. Uh, alternatively, they could be grass, uh, fire, water, rock. For the three forms, the, the grass ghost one is all but confirmed. So again, we're getting closer and closer to the release of this anyway, so it doesn't really matter because we're going to get the types regardless uh, very, very soon. But um, that very well could be the types of all of the new legendary Pokemon um, for the DLC. We still don't know the type of the new Ursa Luna form. Um, we obviously know the type of Diplin, we know the type of uh, Poltergeist. Uh, but yeah, Ursa Luna and the legendaries we still don't know, which is a bit weird but it is what it is like i'm surprised they didn't get data mined as well as everything else but that's just how it goes but uh that is going to be everything for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please do consider hitting the like button down below let's try and hit 500 likes it does really help out leave a comment with your thoughts on the latest leaks for the teal mask dlc of course we're going to be streaming the teal mask when it drops on wednesday um so obviously if you want to come out to that and see what it's like or play along with us make sure to subscribe ring the notification bell but uh yeah thank you so much for watching have a fantastic rest of your day and until next time Peace.